I kind of gathered in the comments of my last video, which was my closet makeover and moving announcement. So if you don't know what's happening and what this background is, I recommend you check that out below. I will link it. Um, but I kind of gathered that you guys would like to see a closet tour and I'm so excited. It's finally done. I've color coded to my heart's content and found a place for everything, which seems like a miracle. Without further ado, let's get right into my closet reveal. So here's a little sneak peek of the upstairs bedroom. If you want to see more of that, then make sure you check out my video on Friday because I will be doing a full tour of the apartment. But right to the right of the bedroom area that I just showed you is the closet. So here's an outside view of it. This is what you see when you come up the stairs of the apartment. And you can see how cleverly um, it's been built because it's got little lips on each of the sweater shelves so that they don't just slip off and fall down the stairs. You can see all of the really beautifully finished wood and then the steel of the apartment which was already there well before we even considered building the closet. So that's kind of the inspiration that we had to work with. Alright, so here I am standing at the entrance of the closet. To my left hand side is the washer dryer unit. Not very interesting, but to the right hand side is this shelving which I am so happy with. This is the best shelving I have pretty much ever had in a closet and I'll tell you why. Um, let's take a, t a step closer in a second but let me just go section by section so you guys can get a broad overview. So on the right hand side is the Chris section. So generous of me I know to give him a third of my closet but that's the amount of clothes that he has. You'll see he has some more things in the closet near the entrance as well so I'll take you guys through that at the end of this video. But up here, he pretty much has all of his jackets and trousers and trousers up there. Um, then on the far side of the closet, I have the good stuff. I have my handbag box, which I told you guys about in my closet makeover video, was very important to me so that my handbags could be all together and safe and I could also kind of enjoy them. So you can see I have a couple of them out of the dust bags and we'll take a look at that in a second as well. All right, you guys, so I thought I would go through and kind of give you some tips on how to use shelving and install shelving so that it really simplifies your life in terms of getting dressed, fits a lot of stuff, and just keeps everything as neat as possible. Um, so all of this fits all of my knitwear, trousers, and jeans, because those are the three items of clothing, um, excuse the washing machine, that I do not like to hang, because I think it takes up a lot of room, it's kind of awkward to hang, and um, it just is difficult to get to in the morning. I can't really see my trousers as well as if they're folded. So it's nice that out of nine shelves, I only actually need seven. Um, and it's very compact, you can see, compared to my body. Um, these are not enormous shelves. They're not extremely deep either or extremely tall in between um, each other. And that actually sounds like it would be something that would limit you, but my experience has been that it's actually a huge positive because if you don't have them be too tall, then you can actually kind of fit everything in. And the height of the shelf will actually wedge your clothing in and keep it from toppling over to the side and just making one big pile on these really huge shelves. So the width of these is pretty much um, the width of pants folded and then the height of them is about three or four pairs of pants and three sweaters folded as well. And so a lot of you guys asked me if I was going to be using baskets in this space, probably because I used to use a lot of baskets. But for me, they didn't tend to be that organized, so everything would just end up in a pile in the basket all wrinkled. Um, and I never made an effort to keep it nice because the advantage of baskets is that they keep things out of sight. Um, so you have to ask yourself that question of what you would rather, but for this space, um, baskets would have added a lot of bulk and actually I figured out that for me they don't really work all that well for clothing they're good for accessories but not for clothing I've kind of grouped them a little bit um, nothing terribly kind of micromanagey though because that's just not really my style I wanted this closet tour to be a little bit real as well um, in that this is pretty much how it's gonna be um, during my daily life on a good day and it's not perfect um, so I've got most of my cream and oatmeal sweaters as well as stripy ones and 
often worn black and gray ones on this shelf so this is after you know we've gone through the trousers and jeans and down below I've got gray beige and some kind of more um, warm ones that I'm not wearing as much right now because it's still not that cold in Vancouver and then down below I'm starting to get into color so I've got reds purples greens and blues on this shelf and then down below I have some sweaters that I just don't wear quite as much that's pretty much my shelving unit so let's go on to the rest of the closet. Over here there's not too much to say because this is all um, Chris's things. He opted to keep them mostly on wooden hangers and you'll see that I opted mostly for velvet covered hangers which are not as nice let's be honest as these beautiful wood hangers but they do take a lot less space so it's another question you have to ask yourself is do you have the space for really luxurious hangers? Is that something that you want or need or would you rather have more space and thinner hangers? Alright, so you can see all of my stashed away shoes. So these are mostly dressy shoes or summery shoes. Down below, a little bit scrunched up, I've got all of my cardigans. Um, you can see I have quite a lot of those and I do wear them a lot. Um, but not as often as sweaters for the fall and winter. I wear them more in the spring, so I've kind of stashed them down below. And I'll probably switch over some sweaters from the sh shelving I just showed you um, and switch them for cardigans once the weather again, you know, next spring gets a little bit warmer. Over here, not the prettiest, but, you know, this is real for us. We don't really have a... Uh, like, kind of linen closet in the apartment. It is a loft, so it doesn't really have stuff like that. Um, so we've ended up just kind of folding all of our linens here. So we have some spare sheets and towels, um, which is very useful. I like having lots of towels. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's a girly necessity and just kind of real life. Um, so yeah, let's go up and take a look at shirts and handbags now. Right, so above the handbag box, you can see there's actually a thin sliver of space, which was accidental in the installation. And I decided to make use of it and be creative. And I put all of my wallets and thin evening bags that don't really need covers because they're a little bit older and I don't mind um, up there. So those are really nicely stashed up there. They're not kind of reach for very often so that was a perfect fit and then over here I have the magical handbag box so it used to be really unthinkable for me to have any handbags out of just bags but because this space doesn't have a lot of natural light um, and it's just kind of very safe um, from the elements I decided it was okay to have a couple of them that are a bit older out of their dust bags once in a while um, so right now I'm kind of enjoying looking at my vintage Chanel flap which is already quite worn um, just by virtue of being vintage and then I've got my very well-loved um, three or four year old actually now um, Louis Vuitton Galliere bag so I love this bag and I reach for it very often so it makes practical sense for me to have it out of a dust bag and easy to reach and everything looks nice and puffy because it's now all stuffed with tissue paper which I was recommended to do by a Chanel essay so on the left I've got my two mulberries my Lily and base water, then I have my Chanel wallet on chain. I've got my um, Chanel GST back there as well. And then behind that, you can just about glimpse there's an old Michael Kors bag. And I do um, take that one out if I want something that's not quite as flashy and branded. Um, it's actually an unusual Michael Kors one in that it doesn't really have a lot of obvious branding. And it's a really pretty light gray with rose gold detailing. So although I've opted to color code my dresses, I decided not to do it for shirts because because when I need a shirt as part of an outfit because it is just one piece as opposed to the central piece like a dress, um, I kind of think more about the shape of it So um, and, and also the fabric. So over here I've got all of my cotton kind of more traditional suit shirts for when I do opt to wear something a bit more business formal as opposed to business casual. And then over here these are actually much more fre frequently, frequently um, <laughs> worn by me and these are all of my silk shirts. Um, mostly from Club Monaco from Joe Fresh um, and from equipment. So I've built up quite a collection of these because I wear them a lot. I find them very easy for the office and very comfortable. Um, then over here in the middle I have blouses mostly with short sleeves so little shells like for example here is one from Banana Republic. I have some that are plainer. They're kind of more formal t-shirts. My casual t-shirts are in a different place which I'll show you um, during my apartment tour. I just have little shells um, and then that pulls into a little bit of knitwear that's a bit more structured, so I do hang it up, like for example, I've got this Tory Birch Mandarin collar 
shirt um, over here and short sleeves as well so I've got short sleeve blouses over here so this is a knit it's a cashmere because it has no shoulder um, it makes more sense to hang than to fold because it's so tiny it would end up kind of scrunched up so I have a bit of a of a switch um, there from folding to hanging but that's what works for me so you have to figure that out for yourself it's taken me many years to figure out what works for me and then over here I realized I was a hipster um, once I started organizing my closet because I never had all of my plaid shirts together and then I realized how many I have when I finally did combine them so this is my plaid shirt section and this is kind of where I often reach for on a weekend when I'm kind of cold and it's raining outside this is my comfort corner here hopefully you can see I've got all of my skirts and that reaches back past where the dresses start all of my dresses you can see I have built up an extensive collection because they are some of my favorite pieces to wear I think they're so easy and comfortable and a dress is just such an easy thing to build an outfit around because it's an easy centerpiece that to me feels very ladylike and very easy to tweak as well to be a little bit more or less um, business formal or business casual. So I'll kind of guide you through um, the color coordination that I've done. It's not a perfect system, it's more of a color ombre than it is like a perfect color blocked um, section because that's just how it goes if you have a lot of prints especially. Over here I have greens going into browns. So you can see they're kind of brown prints and um, some of them are a bit hard to categorize. Like if you have something stripey that has all the colors, you kind of have to pick out what you think of it more as. And to me I thought of this more of like a blue green kind of dress um, same for this one and then yeah so that goes into brown you can see I've got some Tory Burch here old H&M old Topshop and that kind of fades um, from brown into more of a red so you can see this is the place of demarcation um, so there's an old Calvin Klein knitted leopard dress here um, and then that fades into a newer Ted Baker dress that has a bit of brown but mostly red and then over here I have my red section I do really like to wear red I know not everybody does here another often reach for section is black and white and black and cream I love that as a color combination it's definitely a huge, huge favorite of mine. Um, so I kind of blocked my often worn gray and black and white dresses here for maybe like a freak out kind of morning where I'm running out of time. That then goes into purple and plum. So I've got all these dresses and you can see I try and have a little bit of in between sometimes. So this is taupe, which is a bit more gray. And then that goes straight into a really bright, gorgeous purple Millie. And then I've got some violet gold. And then that goes into blue. So I have some brighter blues here. From here to here is all blue and navy. So, um, but a lot of it has prints to it in other colors so it doesn't get too boring and monochrome. Here I have all of my LBDs um, going from more casual to more formal. So the kind of earlier ones are the more plain suitwear ones. I've got some theory, Banana Republic going on here. And then this one's actually a bit more gray, but I think of it more as kind of an evening LBD. So it, it ended up here. Some of them are more wintry, some of them are more summery. I didn't really start to get too picky there. So on the far side here, these are really holiday dresses, so I don't wear them too often. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got some kind of more statement pieces like this Cavalli one's not going to be worn too often, but I still want it out so that I can grab it if I have a special occasion that comes up. This is what worked for me and I made sure that the shelving underneath was low enough that even like a longer dress would still be able to fit. I don't really own any maxi dresses anymore except ones for the beach that are then packed away and I could even fold. Um, so these are for kind of below the knee dresses. That's where I've kind of set the bar. Let's go downstairs and check out the front entrance closet. That way you guys have seen my total storage space and this video is like full disclosure of how I organize all of my things that you guys have so often seen in all of my outfit videos. All right, you guys. So here is the second part of our closet storage. This includes all of the leftover shoes that aren't um, upstairs, all of our blazers and coats and jackets um, so you know it had to fit quite a lot but it's a very deep closet um, that had very little organization before and you'll see we have had it um, organized this space used to be um, all railing so just for coats but we have a lot of shoes between the two of us and when I say between the two of us I really mean me um, because all the shoes you're seeing there are mine and then underneath Chris has a couple of um, shelves as well um, for guys shoes take a lot less space as well because 
with high heels just are very bulky and they're a real kind of organization challenge. Um, so we have these shelves installed and uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, I'm not going to include all the detailing for the people who did this because they did a poor job. Um, they ripped off a chunk of wall on that side, left a gap here, and then we had asked for it to be wide enough to fit two pairs of shoes lined up, but for whatever reason they cheaped out and there's this um, kind of space here that's not used. So unfortunately that's the dark side of having renos done. Sometimes things aren't exactly what you wanted, but I thought I would still show you guys because um, of course it is better than it used to be before. And I do like the gray color um, that we got for it because I think it looks a little bit more um, interesting than just plain white um, Ikea shelving. Then on this side, let me lift up the camera a little bit so you can see the top, um, we have two sets of railings so you can see um, that really helps to maximize the space because you can hang up double than if you have a long length. Um, so we just kept a very small chunk of long length because neither of us have a lot of long coats except for kind of Burberry Max which are definitely longer. Um, and then on the top part I have pretty much all of my suit um, jackets going on there and then underneath I have more casual jackets and leather jackets. Pretty nice because with these sliding doors you can pretty much just hide the mess from people who come over and the mirrors really add a lot of brightness to the space because they reflect the light um, from the front entrance. So is it for my closet tour video. Hope you guys liked it and make sure you subscribe and check back on Friday for a full apartment tour. Bye!